Hi and welcome to another edition of Plastic Models by a Regular Dude <clears throat> and Plastic Models for Beginners. Um, thanks for watching uh, the first two series so far uh, pertaining to building the kit and then uh, painting the kit. Um, appreciate all the views and the comments. I really appreciate the comments and the few tips I've gotten. Um, some things I'd forgotten and stuff like that. So. Um, to this point we have uh, painted the kit with the base color which in this case is a, is a uh, uh, Panzer yellow type color for a vehicle in North Africa during World War II German vehicle so the next step <coughs> in this next series will deal with uh, painting the details on the kit um, got the primer base coat on so now it's time to uh, to paint all the small stuff and for that we'll be using a brush and uh, speaking of brushes hopefully uh, some of you that maybe didn't want to spray your spray a model um, hopefully you uh, checked out Owen's um, channel quick kits and how he brush paints models again I, I just I mean the guy he just does an excellent job his finished products I look at him and it's like it's great good stuff so Owen if you happen to watch this mad brush painting skills man so anyway that's enough of that let's uh, go ahead and uh, change camera angles and I'll start talking a little bit about the detail painting portion of this kit okay so we have the kit and it is ready to go for paint so first of all um, need to determine what kind of paint that you want to use and there are various and sundry types of paint you can use um, on a model kit there's enamels there are enamels uh, there are lacquers and there are acrylics so um, if I've talked about this already forgive me maybe this will be somebody's only video that they watch in this series so I'm going to talk about it again um, so anyway there's enamels acrylics and uh, lacquers now lacquers um, pretty potent stuff they create a lot of vapors um, can be pretty harmful if you're in a cooped up area so I don't even use those and I'm not familiar enough with them to really talk that much about them now there are some modelers that use them pretty much exclusively uh, especially for laying base coats getting all kinds of effects and stuff like that but uh, for our purpose we're going to keep it simple and um, stick with enamels and or acrylics uh, the difference between the two is enamels you use uh, say mineral spirits or a particular brands you know enamel thinner and basically it's a it's a harsh solvent type of thinner uh, that you use to thin the paints as well as clean up your tools afterwards. Um, then there are acrylic paints, <coughs> which uh, of acrylic paints there are two types. There are um, alcohol based such as Tamiya and then there are water based such as uh, MIG by Ammo, Testers Model Master Acrylics, um, Vallejo. Uh, those are some of the water based and for me I like to use the water-based paints just for the simple fact um, that there are no uh, odors there's no odors there's no uh, vapors that you have to deal with you can paint in the house you don't have to worry about other people in the house breathing the stuff so with that in mind that is what I'm going to use now three of the brands that I uh, keep on hand are MIG uh, ammo by MIG um, I have to order those online and then which here's an example ammo by MIG um, and then there are the Vallejo acrylic colors uh, model color there's also one t called model air that's generally for airbrush usage but I also use it for brush painting sometimes sometimes it works a little better on smaller details just because it's thinner in consistency and then there are Model Master uh, acrylics. 
which uh, uh, also work pretty well. But for most of my brush work, I stick with the Vallejo brand. And they can be found at uh, major retailers, they can be found online. Uh, for example, here in my area we have Hobby Lobby, which is a uh, pretty well-known chain of hobby slash craft stores uh, across the United States, and uh, they carry these, you know, in stock. So these are the ones I'm going to be using. Now, the ones you use, um, play around with them a little bit, learn how to use them, learn what you need to do to thin them to get the, to the right consistency and, and all that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, uh, thinning them. Um, as far as this brand goes, okay? So what we're going to be, you know, the other thing you'll need obviously is are some brushes. And uh, if you have watched Owen's uh, videos for acrylics, he recommends golden Taclon type brushes. Um, that's the type of bristle they are. And it's kind of this orangish yellow color. And uh, they seem to work really well with, um, uh, with acrylic paints. Um, you'll want to make sure that you have some decent brushes. Get you know, uh, multi packs are usually pretty good if you get a decent variety. Um, now, I bought a pack recently, and it came with all of these different sizes, anywhere from number five to ten aught or ten zero. Okay, um, and then quite a few in between. The brush that I use the most for all of my painting is this number one with uh, the zero coming in second and probably the number three and third. So a few different sizes are a good idea just because uh, it will allow you to paint different um, different things and you know the size, the size of the brush can, can make a little bit of difference on how easy the paint flows and all that. So if you want to get yourself some, and you don't have to spend a ton of money, especially when you're getting started. Um, as a matter of fact, I would recommend against it because some brushes can get very expensive. Uh, you can go to said Hobby Lobby and buy a pack of brushes that look like this, this color here, you can go for like $5.99. Now granted, some people don't like them, they don't work as well as others, but you know, for learning, it's, it's a small investment and you may find that you like them a lot and you'll never have to replace them and if you don't then you can eventually replace them with better quality brushes but one thing you want to make sure of is regardless of the size you want a decent point on it for detail painting for large area painting like Owen does on the Quick Kits channel and I have no affiliation with him I don't even know him uh, but I do think he really does phenomenal work and you know that's why I mentioned him specifically so you know nothing weird like that going on but you'd use a broader brush for doing broader paint jobs but in this case we're doing detail stuff so we will use the detail brushes so you want to make sure they have a decent point on them and that they hold that point and uh, that way you can paint the smaller items with uh, without much difficulty and it also doesn't hurt to have uh, some other like little for lack of a better term, you know, kind of this, not quite as sharp of a tip. You know, for, you know, like if you had to just paint something this size right here, it might make the paint flow a little bit easier. But just get a variety of brushes and practice with them. So that's what you need. So I think the first thing we'll paint today is, um, are the wheels. Uh, the rubber portion around the wheel here uh, is what we will paint first. And there's two ways you can paint it. You can either um, use um, a stick or a brush, or if you have one small enough, um, whatever, something that you can stick inside the uh, where the axle goes how many brushes that small crazy so um, anyway I'll use this file this will work you know something that you can get it firmly attached you know small sticks you know uh, skewering sticks for like um, kebabs and stuff like that some of those work well um, 
or you can even just use an alligator clip, anything to hold it steady while you paint it, okay? That way it gives you a little bit of control so when you're painting the item, you're not trying to hold it with your fingers and getting paint all over it. The other way you can paint it, and it's probably the way I'm going to do it today, is to go ahead and reattach the wheels back onto the axles. And then it's just a matter of resting the, the vehicle on its side and then you can paint the wheel like that. So I'm going to reattach all these wheels, put the sprockets back in place and the idler wheels, uh, get all that done and then uh, I'll get out my paint and we'll start talking about how to get your paint the right consistency and start painting. Okay, so let's start painting <clears throat> the detail stuff. This is what I need for materials. Um, I've got my paint, which in this case I'm using uh, black, just plain black, in the Vallejo model color. I've got some water. I've got a little cup to mix my paint, uh, or to thin my paint. And then obviously I have the, the model and Um, a paper towel for drying my brush off and such like. So what we're going to paint first is going to be the the tie the rubber portion of the wheels. Okay, so we have to do it on both sides. We have to do these little wheels here, the return rollers, and then we have to do this wheel here. And I think that is all the black that we'll need on the whole portion of this. So what you want to do is make sure your paint is mixed up really well, especially, and I'll just make a note on this particular brand of paint, uh, the pigments are really high quality and there's a lot of pigment in here so it tends to settle in the bottom. So you really need to shake it up. And what I do, some recommend against it for whatever crazy reasons, but what I do is uh, this little tip part can just pop right off. and. I take a stainless steel, not a galvanized, not anything else, but a stainless steel nut so it won't rust and drop it down inside of there to act as an agitator. That way, when, um, when I uh, shake it up, the nut will mix the pigments that settle in the bottom into the carrier, into the rest of it. One other thing to note, <clears throat> generally when you, um, whoever carries, whatever places carry this, at least this particular brand of uh, paint, they also carry a thinner medium. Now I'm not going to use that in this case. Um, it works really well, it does a good job, but I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible. So we're just going to use water and see how that works out. Now you can use how, whatever kind of method you want to get the water from there to there. Sometimes you know people like to just dip their brush and just keep dropping it in until they get their uh, their paint to the consistency they want. But in this case, I'm going to use a uh, an eyedropper or pipette or pipette, whatever you want to call it, to do that because it just makes it a little. You know, it gives you a little bit more control. So I'm going to use that, but that's not necessary. Is I'm just doing it for convenience sake. Now, if you're not using this brand of paint, you're using, say, you know, Tamiya, or you're using uh, Model Master Acrylics, uh, whatever brand, you'll just want to monkey around with it a little bit to get it to a consistency where it flows. And I'll kind of give you an idea what that looks like um, whenever I uh, uh, get this thinned out. So. Um, I'm using this to mix it in. You can use a little piece of foil. You can use, you know, a, just a flat piece of plastic card. It doesn't matter. Um, some people like to use the little round um, artist's paint mixing plate. It's got a big dish in the middle and then small round dishes all the way around the outside. Those are really handy as well because uh, you can do multiple colors at once. And when you get into mixing colors, you can put them in separate ones and then mix them together in another one. Just kind of handy, but it's nice to have something uh, to mix it in. 
not necessary, but you know, it does make it a little easier. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this paint in here. Okay, and as you can see, I don't know if you saw that coming out, but it's it's kind of thick. It's kind of a thick paint, and I, you know, you can paint with it right out of the uh, right out of the bottle, but it is kind of thick. And I'm going to show you on the bottom where it doesn't really matter here. You know, it's really kind of thick, and it works, and it works well. However. Um, you'll need to thin it a little bit just so it doesn't dry out too fast. So I'm just going to drop a couple of drops, a couple of drops of water in there. And you shouldn't use your, your paintbrush to mix the paint because it can mess up the bristles. So you can either use a little toothpick like this or What's really nice is places that sell model paints and stuff like that usually sell these really cheap plastic nylon bristle brushes that are pretty worthless for just about everything except for stirring paint. They're really good for stirring paint and then once if you get into using an airbrush they're really good uh, for cleaning out your, your uh, color cup on an airbrush. Okay now you can, hopefully you can tell, but this is a little bit thinner now, but it's still opaque. You can't see anything through this clear thing, this clear container, so um, it's ready to go. So we got that, got that. Now I'm going to clean this little bit of paint off of here while simultaneously wetting the brush because it helps if the brush is a little bit wet. And then what we will do is dip your brush, try to get try to get paint way up here up into the ferrule part, the metal part, because you know it's hard to get out of there and it can really wreak havoc on your on your uh, on your brush. So all you gotta do is now when you have wheels that turn, it's kind of nice because you can touch the brush to the wheel. See how it's just flowing off? It's not like rubbing off. So, and if you get your paint too thin, put a few more drops in there. And then, um, put a few more drops in, thicken it up till you get a consistency you like. Now, if you get it on the rim, don't worry about it too much because, you know, some people can paint it really easily and other people are just not as... You can look for spots you missed. Okay, so there you go. Here's something else to consider. When painting tires, the rubber portion of a, um, a vehicle, whether it be an aircraft model or a tank or a armored car or a motorcycle, whatever, rubber's never really black. It's more of a grayish black. But just to keep it simple and not mix any colors or get into anything else, and I don't have any dark grays, we're just going to use, use black. So that's all there is to it. You just do that, and the way I do it is I paint the outside edge first because it's the, the hardest and most delicate part to paint. Now, if your if your tires don't roll, then that's where you're going to have to be careful. And I'll show you whenever we do those. Now, for these, I'm using my number three. It's got a really nice point, but it's got a lot of volume, so it'll hold a lot of paint so your paint doesn't run out really quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint all these wheels on the outside edge and then we'll paint the, uh, the uh, contact uh, part after that. So let me paint these up and we'll come back. Okay, I've got all the outside surfaces painted. So now I just need to do this. Now as you can see here, there's no paint on this side of the wheels. And for those, it's not really necessary. For these, it is. But we'll get into that later on after we do these.
So I'm going to flip this upside down and then carefully just paint the the uh, portion of the wheel that comes in contact with the tracks or if it was a wheeled vehicle it comes in contact with the road now pay attention to where you are where your finger if you're rolling it like this pay attention that you don't stick your finger in your paint this acrylic paints dry really fast so depending on your weather what you can do is you, once you get to the part that you, where you can't touch it anymore, just hold the outside of the hub. Just hold it steady and paint it like that. So, again, I will paint the rest of these wheels and then come back and we'll move on to the idlers. All right, so we got the wheels all painted up. Tra la la, good to go. Now, as you can see, I got a little bit right there on the rim. So, what I'm going to do is take some clean water on a q-tip or cotton bud depending on where you're from in the world and see if that will wipe off keeping in mind that the paint underneath is an enamel so this is not going to rub it off it's only going to rub off this acrylic paint Okay, and looks like I got most of it off. So I'm even going to take my knife and gently scrape that off. Voila, it's fixed. All right, so the next part to paint <coughs> are the um, return rollers. Okay, so because of the shape, let me zoom in. because of the shape of the return roller rubber portion it is slightly raised from the hub so what you want to do is approach it from an angle and just go around it now my brush is getting kind of clumpy so I'm going to rinse it off as you can see, I have this other bowl of water. Use this one for initial rinsing here, and then use this one to get the residual paint stuff out. Oh, sorry guys, my kitty cat wants me to scratch his head. Okay, so let's try this again where you can actually see it. All right, so I'm getting, getting some paint on my brush. Okay, and then just carefully on the raised surface, apply the paint. This is where a good tip on your brush is a must. Okay, see, just by dragging it around. It's just hitting the, the raised surface of the rubber that's higher than the hub. And you may have to contort a little bit to get around the corners, you know, because you've got the fender in the way. Now I could pop the top off, but we'll pretend that this has all been glued together, so that's not an option. It's just this one's gonna take a little bit more time than the, the road wheels. See, if you're careful, and once you get a groove going, won't be an issue okay so then once you have the outside edge then we'll go in here like this and paint the the outside surface now if you're a little worried about getting paint all over the place don't worry about it because that's underneath the fender and you're not going to see it anyway so that is how uh, you would paint one of these so again I'm going to paint all these and then come back okay the idler wheels have been painted on both sides there you have it 
So the next thing that needs to be painted black is the uh, the rubber portion of the spare road wheel in the front. So. Freshen up the brush by cleaning it a little bit, and then we just do the same thing that we did on the uh, on the road wheels since these are stationary. Just carefully. Now sometimes it helps. Now notice I've got my other hand here helping steady this one. You know, if you do like me and tend to drink a cup of coffee before you do delicate modeling operations, you get kind of shaky. So having the table and your other hand to help steady you will make things a lot easier. I don't know why I insist on drinking coffee before I do stuff like this, but I do. So I don't know, maybe I'm a masochist or I just like to practice. And one another thing to remember too is always try and drag the brush don't push it. When you push it, the, the bristles can splay out and it'll mess up your paint job. Now if you have to go kind of in an angle and pull it like I've been doing on these wheels, just keep the tip up against an edge, that's fine. Just don't push the brush. There might come times when it's absolutely necessary, like in a really tight spot, but you want to be extra careful about doing that. Okay. So I'm going to continue painting this wheel and then we'll come back and look at what's next. So just another quick note, you know, in painting around these edges and where these brackets are to hold the spare wheel, made me think of something. Um, a lot of people, me included, like to paint uh, detail parts. before they're attached to the vehicle. Now in a case like this, this wheel, as you can see, is raised, so it makes it easy. Now if that was sitting flush or really close, it'd be a lot harder to paint without getting paint on the hull. So just something to keep in mind, and we'll go over this once we get into uh, the next model and kind of doing a little more advanced type stuff. We'll talk about painting um, extra parts and detail parts, stuff that can be left off of the kit. Um, we'll talk about that next time on how to deal with situations like that because sometimes it's just a lot easier to paint this stuff before it's actually attached to the model. So I'll finish this up and then we'll come back and start painting some of the other uh, details on this kit. Okay, so the next part I'm going to paint is um, the handles on the tools. So we've got um, the sledgehammer right here. Then we have the shovel right there. So I'm going to paint the handles brown. And again, I'm using the... Uh, yeah the Vallejo model color and uh, I am doing flat earth just a basic brown color I've already thinned it out with my uh, with some water brush is nice and clean got my water here so again same thing just being very careful and <clears throat> this is one of those cases where it would have been better to paint the tools off, but I'm, I'm doing this just as the instruction shows because I was reading the instructions and it specifically says uh, assemble the whole kit and then paint. So that's the way instructions show you and that's the way a lot of people do it. But for some things, and again we'll talk about this next time, uh, I'll go over painting uh, parts off of the model. So this is tricky right here. Okay, now obviously you can't get underneath, but it doesn't matter because you can't see underneath. Now you want to make sure that you don't 
paint the clamps. That right there is a clamp that holds the shovel into place. This front flat piece here is the part that holds the shovel head to the vehicle. So you don't want to paint those. And I was looking at the instructions and uh, to me instructions have gotten better over the years. And most manufacturers are the same way. Um, they actually give you color callouts. There'll be an, an arrow pointing to say that, you know, the shovel will say like, you know, metal color or whatever. Uh, they happen to phrase it like in um, outer portion black or tire black or something like that. Well, on this old, uh, these old instructions, there are no color callouts. Um, so that kind of makes it difficult for a beginner. So in a case like that, when you don't have um, that type of uh, information on your instructions, you can look at the box art, which is generally pretty close to what it would have been in real life, which gives you the nice color, you know, fo uh, you know, painting of the model. Or you can check references online. Just find this vehicle, and um, other modelers have built them. Um, photos from museums. Um, Colors in, in museums can be off a little bit sometimes, but that's going to be a uh, subject for another video. But just look and see what needs to be painted. Um, th that, that's all I can tell you if it's not on your instructions. So anyway, we'll go ahead and continue painting. Uh, these handles, and again, just be very careful not to get anything else painted. If you do, just quickly get Q-tip with some water and try and clean it off before it dries. Okay, so it's really as simple as that. Okay, so the shovel handle is painted. So I'm going to paint the uh, sledgehammer handle and um, think those are gun cleaning rods which it would also be wood with a metal tip on it so I'm going to paint those and we'll come back. Okay handles are painted. Next color I'm going to use is uh, again Vallejo colors gunmetal gray and that is for the metal portion of the shovel head and the um, metal portion of the, uh, the sledgehammer, the head of the sledgehammer. We are also going to use that for the main gun and the machine gun on the turret. So, same old thing. Now remember the shovel head comes all the way down here, the shank of it, where it attaches to the handle. So you want to make sure you get that portion as well. Get as far underneath as you can safely. Keeping in mind that this part right here is the actual attachment point where the shovel is held in place onto the vehicle. Okay. So I'm going to do the uh, sledgehammer handle and then I will do the guns. Alright, so the um, sledgehammer head and the shovel head have been painted with the uh, gunmetal gray as well as the main gun and the machine gun. Also, I painted the, uh, the spare track and track length in front to somewhat match the actual tracks. Now, obviously, these are a little bit shinier, but you know, that's pretty close. If you didn't like the shininess, you could always add a little bit of black, mix it together, and that would dull that down a little bit. But we're going to leave that just like that for now.
Now, as you can also see, the drive sprocket and the idlers are gone. What I did is I took those out to my spray area, flipped them over, stuck them to my uh, that large piece of cardboard I had, and sprayed the backside because you can see the backside of the wheels when they're installed. So, I will grab those if they're dry and we'll take a look at what we have thus far. Okay, so here it is. <clears throat> it is all painted up according to what the instructions normally say. Um, we got the tires painted, the tire portion of the wheels painted, um, the hand, the wooden handles on the shovel and the uh, oh, sledgehammer and cleaning rods. Um, we got the barrel, the main gun, and the machine gun painted. Uh, we got the spare track and the spare road wheel painted. And that is pretty much all that the uh, um, instructions would normally call out for to be painted. So it is done. So um, the next step will be to apply the decals. So I'm going to save that for the next video and uh, we'll call this one quits because this is the end of painting. Um, so next time, uh, in the next, the other one should be quite short because decals are actually pretty easy. Uh, that should be pretty quick and that will actually end the basic portion of this model kit. So, we're going to call it quits here. As always, thank you for watching uh, Plastic Models by Regular Dude, uh, modeling Plastic Models for Beginners, and I will see you all next time. Again, questions, comments, suggestions, anything, post in the comments below, and uh, I will answer them as quickly as I can. So until next time, see you later.